Hello and welcome to our interpersonal communication skills presentation. Today we're going to be teaching you how to make a good presentation and how to identify a bad presentation. I'm Callum. And I'm Samantha. There are different ways of presenting information. Information can be presented using pictures, poems, timelines, speeches and posters. The best and most used way to present information is divided into five groups. Electronic, print, face-to-face, -face, teleconferences and visual aids. Electronic. People nowadays have 24-7 access to electronic devices that allow us to communicate with anyone, anywhere, anytime. Electronic devices include phones, which we can use for calling and messaging people. We can use it to access the internet, create websites, chat online through services such as Skype. We can also use a computer for that. And then there's print. This includes brochures, flyers, ads, catalogs, reports, memos, and letters. Commonly used if you want to distribute information to people which you want them to hold on to. With the increase in technological communication, print pieces stand out more. Face to face is the most personal way to interact with people and individuals. We can evaluate body language of your peers, demonstrate products, and use visual aids. Furthermore, questions and feedback you receive instantly reach the whole group. Teleconferences. If you can't afford to get everyone in the same room, consider teleconferencing. Telemeetings give you the same benefits of face-to-face -face communication without the travel costs and scheduling headaches. Visual aid. Standing in front of a group and speaking for long periods while holding notes in your hands or looking down um, can be boring for the audience. Using visual aids for better audience engagement and will prove to make your point. Charts and graphs help to present information creatively and will have an instant positive impact on your audience. The disadvantages that three out of those five groups have is that technology makes everything seem less personal due to lack of personal interaction. On the other hand, can face-to-face -face and teleconferencing be time-consuming and demotivate people when they're done frequently, since they can be very boring after some time. On the other hand, advantages that all methods share is that the fast distribution of information. So many different mediums exist, it's easy to creatively transmit information quickly. Now we're going to look at bad presentations. So this slide is the perfect example of a bad presentation. I use PowerPoint as an example because it is the most frequently used application for presenting information, especially businesses use it a lot. As I said, this is a bad example. The reason for this is because there's information overflow, long sentences, spelling mistakes, background pictures drawing all of the attention away from the presenter. First of all, there are verbal and nonverbal factors that need to be considered and understood. Verbal factors include speech, how we present information, what kind of language do we use, are we informal or informal? Starting with an apology and excusing yourself is one of the worst things you can do. Why? Because an apology sets a negative tone that may affect the entire meeting and make you look like you're not professional enough. And no business wants to do, wants to do business with you if you're not professional. Asking for extra time and talking to the past. If there's less time because you're late or a presentation is too long, you already know that you won't leave behind a good impression. And nobody wants to wait longer than they have to, especially businesses where money is time. Shooting slide barriers is another example. Let's say you have 15 minutes left for your presentation, but you've only covered 20 out of your 58 PowerPoint slides, and you've quickly got to rush through the last few slides. Again, the audience will not think you're professional, and your message will not come across. Reading from your slides. This makes you look very insecure, and it seems like you don't know what you're talking about. And again, it's all about delivering a message, and your message will not come across. Now this point directly links to non-verbal communicating factors, such as body language. Turning your back, or keep turning around, reading from your slides, or you keep on looking down on your notes, you're compounding the mistake of reading by being rude and unprofessional. Fidgeting, you keep on fidgeting with your papers, playing with your jewelry. Why is this a mistake? Anything that distracts your audience from your message is making the message less effective. Other body language factors are movement with the hands, crossed arms, avoiding eye contact, not smiling, walking back and forth, moving your arms and legs quickly. All of these things give the audience an odd feeling. They'll make you seem less open and more dismissive towards the audience. Another fact that needs to be considered is target audience. You need to know who you are addressing. This will affect your speech, 
and your dress code. Again, are you being formal or informal? Do you have to wear a suit and a tie or can you show up in a jumper? Date, time and venue. It is important to show up on time, to come prepared and to be relaxed. It will give a bad impression if you show up late and not prepared because first impressions matter the most. So, now we're on to what is a good presentation. A good presentation is a presentation where listeners are engaged and the message is delivered clearly. So, step one of how to make a good presentation. Explain, ex engage the audience. So first of all, face the audience. That's the best start to make. From the minute you start your presentation, you need to understand that the audience will be listening. And this start of the presentation is the key to whether they're engaged throughout or not. From then on, making eye contact with the audience. You'll find quite often that once you make eye contact, those listeners will be engaged. Then we've got projecting your voice. In a big lecture hall, if I'm presenting at the front, it's pointless me talking in a tiny whisper because then no one can hear. Whereas if I'm talking louder, even the people at the back of the presentation can hear. And a personal story. This can show a connection to the audience. By telling them something about yourself, you're making yourself more open. Next up, simplicity. Short stories. As Samantha was referring to earlier, information overload is the main thing about why presentations are deemed not good enough or do not get across the message to the audience. So a simple number, like you can see in this slide here, 700 million iPhones sold. But that just, that's not just a couple of numbers. From that we understand the popularity of the brand. Then enthusiastic words. Steve Jobs used enthusiastic words such as fantastic, amazing. This enthusiasm for the product will then portray, be portrayed by those listening and engaging and summarise. So not everyone will listen to every word of the presentation. So at the beginning, middle and end, you need to summarise what you're going to tell them, what you're telling them and then what you've told them. Then we have openings and closings. This will set the standard for the whole presentation. If I make a boring opening, people will just tune out within 30 seconds. But once these people have tuned out, it's near impossible to then regain their attention further on in the presentation. So, why I'm the presenter? This is about why I'm the person in front of you giving you this information. What qualifies and makes me relevant? This also leads on to what the people listening are benefiting from the presentation. So, why are you watching this presentation? That was explained clearly on in our introduction. You're watching this presentation because we'll be able to let you know what you're doing well, what you're doing bad, and where you can improve. So, preparation. Preparation is key. It's something that the audience will not see, but they'll understand. This is through knowing what you're meant to be saying, knowing what you're meant to be teaching, and then making sure it's a smooth transition and delivery. So, Three top tips. This goes back to before, summarising. So in the opening and closing, I'm now summarising the three main things for a successful presentation. As you can see, be simple, be engaging, and start as you mean to go on, so that you keep the audience. Thank you for listening to our presentation.